Welcome to Wowza Studio Sessions live at NAB. Today we're gonna to talk about Facebook Live, the Facebook Live API, building on the Facebook Live API, and I probably have two of the best people to talk about that with us. My name is Anthony Lazaro, I'm the product lead for Wowza Clearcaster. With me I have Colleen Henry, who is kind of master and commander of all things Facebook. Colleen, can you maybe intro yourself with uh, your title? Uh, my title at work is Cobra Commander of Facebook Video Special Forces, and uh, mostly I just go and do whatever needs to be done to make live streaming work. Typically, high-end live streaming, so like our own company events or you know things that not a ton of events, but the events that get viewed a lot. And I build a lot of the tooling around that. Awesome. So I was kind of close. And then I have Charlie Good, <laughs> CTO and co-founder of Wowza. Yeah, the guy probably one of the. <laughs> It's a lot of code. Hey, there <laughs> there you go. John Carmack, though. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I just can't get away from it. So, <laughs> so I think kicking off, let's just kick off with the you know Facebook Live, Facebook Live API. It, give us, Colleen, just you know, quick, you know, what's going on with the Facebook Live API? Who can build it and use with it? What are cool things that are being done. So there's a bunch of really cool new things with the Facebook Live API. Traditionally, um, if you had a platform like you know, Livestream or Twitch or YouTube, you would just generate an RTMP URL and you'd get a traditional encoder and you'd manually configure it with all these settings that nobody understands and then you would push it in and uh, then your stream would just start instantly. Problem is that that's not a fantastic workflow for people who don't know what they're doing or the first time they're doing it or even when you hit go, when are you actually started? So we um, actually collaborated with Wowza to create this sort of reference uh, design where they built the encoder and we built the APIs to try and make a workflow that's really easy and works really well for people and is really high quality and high reliability. So we took away all of the things that you can do to really accidentally misconfigure something and we, we really walk you through the process so that everything's easy. You never have to manually configure anything. You don't have to copy and paste anything. Uh, and uh, the result of that is the Wowza Clearcaster. Now, there are other... Um, companies that are totally building on top of these APIs. They're all public, but uh, we partnered with you guys to kind of, uh, well, first you had to dog food the initial versions of it and help us make it better. <laughs> and, and then now it's kind of, you're setting the standard for how live streaming can be done. And so, yeah, that's the, a little bit of the live video API versus the live encoding API. And Charlie, I imagine you've built against both. Maybe you want to describe as someone uh, who's, who's built into the live encoding API just how that works a little bit from your side? Yeah, I think the the magic, so, so the old methodology was you created a broadcast through making API calls, you'd get really back an RTMP URL, you'd be guessing what are the appropriate settings for Facebook, so you're hoping that you're setting the right frame rate and frame size and number of reference frames and number of B frames, that's gonna give you a decent like pu published stream into Facebook, and then you would push it into Facebook. And that was kind of the traditional way to do it. So with the new live API, it's much more of a kind of rich API to work against and all that configuration, all those complex decisions that you used to make and kind of guess at to, as to what were the best settings for Facebook are all done behind the scenes. So now the encoder gets paired directly with Facebook and it will show up in the Facebook API and can be used on the live create page. Uh, when we actually do go live, go into the preview state, we're doing a handshake with Facebook telling us this. We tell Facebook the size of the video and the frame rate, and it comes back and tells us what, it, what are the appropriate frames, uh, you know, encoding settings to use for that live stream. Uh, and that's all just kind of magical. I mean, it, it makes it, for the user, literally all they're doing is going to the live create page and selecting their encoder and going live. And, and it's the coolest thing ever. Awesome. And and your UI literally is Facebook in this, you know. Right. So you pair it and you don't when you go to an event, you don't need to figure out what's the or the IP address of the encoder and go to some web interface and then go somewhere and copy and paste into it. You just pair it sort of like a Roku. You get a like a six digit yeah. six digit code and then you go to Facebook and say encoder turn on and then you see a preview and then you say start and it sends a command and the encoder counts down and then it goes live. And the UI in Facebook, that live create page. I mean, there's so much that you can do there. I think one thing that you guys launched recently was the live cross-posting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to speak to what is live cross-posting? So um, previously what you would have done with the Facebook Live API is that you would generate on lots of different pages uh, an individual stream and then you would, from your encoder, send to all of those pages the same video 
or you would uh, send it up to like a Wowza streaming engine server, Wowza cloud, and then syndicate to all of those pages. But that's not really the way you want to do it. You don't want to transcode video multiple times. You want to have one asset. You want to have one set of caching thing, one set of assets caching on the CDN. And so now you can actually say, oh, these are all the pages that I control. I'm going to send in one stream, but I just want it to appear in lots of different places. Yeah, it's awesome. So it saves a bunch of you know on-premise work and also just makes it super easy. I think similar to how the paired encoder eliminates all the stream keys and configuration there. Plus the bandwidth savings. Like if you were going to five pages, you needed five times the bandwidth to yep. do that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Unbelievable. And you know, other APIs I think I've, I've you know, heard people ask about, one was uh, geo-blocking. Mm -hmm. And so that's advanced. And I think, Charlie, you might have coded against that and that's also in the Facebook yeah, so that's API. just recently showed up in the Facebook UI uh, and is all, as well in our UI. It gives you the b ability to both geo-block and block on other aspects of a profile um, to like further control who's watching your live streams. Um, it's really neat. Like it's, it's. I mean, again, it's like a free CDN for your customers yeah. to be able to reach their audience. You know, and now you make sure you're not reaching the audience you don't want to reach. If you don't have the rights to the content in certain countries, you can block those countries and stream everywhere else. Yeah, I mean, earlier I was talking with um, someone who was streaming a lot of rugby championships, and I think that they contracted with television networks to go to certain countries, but countries where they didn't have any contract in place, they were using Facebook Live as a way to build awareness for the sport, et cetera, and, and engage an audience um, that way. Um, Colleen, maybe speak to a little bit of the Facebook infrastructure from a, a like end-to-end -end latency and you know even quality. I, I do think that Facebook is you know at an advantage to other platforms in terms of its end-to-end -end latency and what's going on there. So. Do you want to just speak to? So if you're going to, you know, one way you can describe it is it's, it's photon to photon. Photons go into the glass, they hit the camera sensor, and then the end photons come out of the screen. So exactly how fast that is end to end. Right now it varies a little bit whether you're on web or Android or iOS. Uh, we're working a lot on making it a, a much lower latency than it is now. I think we're around like nine seconds right now, which is, you know, you kind of want to be six or less for like true interactivity, yep. but it's, it's not that bad. The, with the Clearcaster, the way that things come in via RT and PS, actually n almost none of the latency is between the encoder and the platform. It's that we're, we're trying to actually optimize for a really scalable delivery right now so that if your broadcast becomes huge, it doesn't explode. Um, but we're, we're working on techniques to make things much lower latency and scalable. Awesome. And Charlie, as someone building, I mean, how have you thought about interactivity and in helping to increase that engagement with some of the tools Facebook provides? Yeah, so we, but part of the product is a talent view, right? So the talent can see what's going on, they can see themselves on the screen, as well as get feedback from the comments and reactions as the presentation's going. So it really, pro it, it provides a rich experience. So I can see what people, questions are being asked or, you know, cues that are being sent my way as I'm doing a presentation, and then I can react to those directly in, in, the, in the event while it's going on. Uh, we think that's important, like that, that's one of the, values of working with a Facebook, right? Like it's it's audience and it's interactivity and engagement. And those are things I think that we accomplish with the with the integration between the Clearcaster and the Facebook platform. Yeah, and, and you know one other thing that I know the Clearcaster does to help with engagement is it is it uses the or it can broadcast in Square, so you can have that. Which kills us. I know, but, yeah, Square Video's just But if you look at wrong. the numbers, people actually really like vertical and Square Videos on their cell phone. A lot of people on Facebook are consuming on their cell phone. So um, it, it results in higher engagement. But as maybe we're just old school, <laughs> we, we prefer our video to be 16 by 9, yep. maybe even 235, but people really enjoy their one-to-one -one video, it seems. Yeah, and it just it does hurt a little bit every time we find someone turns on that setting, but that's all right. But it work, it, it does get higher engagement. Yeah, and, or and also like captions, for example, captions is another way to, to get much higher engagement. One of the things that Clearcaster does is if you plug in an SDI feed with captions on it, you just get captions on Facebook Live. Yeah, and I know for Square too, you know, it, it's a little bit tricky to actually broadcast in Square because you don't use Square Video. Like that's not uh, only to Facebook or you know social would that be a, a prohibited, permitted format. So, but it makes so much sense <laughs> when most people are viewing on a cell it phone. It does. Right. So how did we, how does that get enabled within the Clearcaster? What did you do to build in Square? So once you turn, so we're actually cropping the frame. So you take a 16, 16 by nine source, we're cropping off the left and the right to get the Square, the result in Square video. We are displaying that back on the talent view so you can make sure you stay, <laughs> you know, kind of on the screen as you're giving your presentation. So you, you can see what's going on. Awesome. And you know another thing that I know is going on with the the API is redundancy. So Colleen, do you want to speak 
to redundancy? Yeah, something that I've wanted for at least two years now and have been fighting for, we, we're finally uh, coming out with, which is the ability to have two encoders uh, streaming to uh, over separate internet connections, ideally, uh, to two different entry points. And then if one goes down, it automatically fails over to the backup. But something that's unique that we put in is that if you want to force it to fail over to the other connection, you can actually press a button and it switches nearly instantaneously. So let's say you know you have to unplug one encoder. You don't have to unplug and wait for it to time out. You just press the button, switch it over, and then you can switch over to it now. And you guys have actually already implemented it in your, in your UI. Right, yeah, so we have the ability to do that today. So how does it work in the ClearCaster in terms of what do you have to go through to set up redundancy? Th that's what's kind of brilliant. You plug in the two ClearCasters, you're probably going to want to separate the power, separate the network, two SDI, you know, an SDI feed into each box. Uh, all the time code synchronization and the complexities of doing a redundant stream are handled by the ClearCaster, like we're doing that behind the scenes. Um, so once you set up and pair those two encoders, they will show up um, when you go to create that live broadcast, and you literally select one as your primary, one as your backup, and go. Uh, and then the streams will both be published to Facebook at the same time. We, it's a hot, hot kind of um, setup. And then uh, at any time, if you want to switch, you can force a switch. Or if the network goes bad or the conditions are such that the stream no longer is, is healthy for the primary stream, it'll, it, it'll switch to the backup. Yeah, and I, It's brilliant. Like, I, I mean, mean it's it, switching super fast, seeing the demos yeah. of it. it it's awesome. How, and how flawless. Like, if you do a manual switch, it'll switch over, you know, without any hiccups or anything. Like, it just switches immediately. It's pretty brilliant. Cool. Um, so what else is coming? I think maybe we take a step back. Like, Facebook Live, where's some of the movement of where you're focusing in terms of either API enhancements or infrastructure enhancements? Quality and reliability are, are two of the biggest things in my personal world at work. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of different feature sets that are coming and I probably shouldn't speak to them, but I can speak to the fact that we're always trying to improve quality and reliability. One of the cool things about the ClearCaster is that since it gets all of its settings for what it should be doing, we're actually working on making it so that when the encoder sends us those, we verify that that's what we got, and then we'll actually pass through the encoding. So there won't be multi-generations photocopy of a photocopy problem, uh, multi-generation loss. It'll just be the stream that comes in is the mezzanine stream that we can re-deliver, which will give us way better quality, and also enable things like being able to do 4K and 1080p 60. Awesome. And, and what use cases are you really excited about for the 4K or the 1080p 60? For 4K, I think spherical is the main use case. Um, you know, like a stereo cube or a spherical Cube map 4K actually looks pretty good um, in a VR headset, but I would say that um, 1080p 60 is definitely for sports, right? Now, eventually, we'll do 4K 60 at some point, but um, I, I think that high frame rate 1080 is, is a very realistic today, high quality thing, and most people aren't used to seeing video that good. Yep. Awesome. And Charlie, what, 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 what are you focused on in terms of ClearCaster? The uh, future? future so yeah. many things like we have so many ideas it's it's amazing so i mean colleen and i are just obsessed with quality so we're going to continue to push the boundaries there for 1080p 60 video for 4k video for 1080p 30 video so we're always trying to come up with better ways to send it in and better encoding parameters you know and, and improvements on both sides both on the clearcaster side as well as on the facebook well, and platform. one of the fun things because of the negotiation right is that when i fix something on my platform to support better quality your box just does it. Right. People people don't have to go change anything. You don't have to change anything. It automatically just happens. So if I flip on 4K tomorrow and somebody has a 4K source, it's on. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing is we're, we want to do titling. So we're going to integrate with some of the titling vendors out there to enable you to put overlays on top of the video, titles, slates, those sort of things. Uh, we're actually demoing that here at the show. Uh, and that's pretty cool. Um, we're also looking at like comment moderation because again the, f the interactivity piece of it we think is very important and so if you're in an event that has a lot of viewers where the comments are coming in and the reaction fast and furiously we want to be able to have a third person actually doing the comment moderation and making sure that that, that the person that's giving the presentation isn't overwhelmed um, I'm trying to think of the other things we're thinking about uh, still want the turntable Yes. You know that one? Uh, so that's right. My, my dream <laughs> I like is that. I want to have a, a little controller that's like a DJ turntable that slowly turns as the comments go by, but then you can stop it and rewind it to go back in the comments to see it. I know I'm never going to get it, but that's my dream. I want. Does well, it need to be a physical turntable? It needs to be a physical turntable, it really physical turntable yeah, yeah. and it needs to be physically rotating and ideally blinky. <laughs> and then if you want, you could do it with your foot. Like if you want to do it kind of off camera, absolutely. 
your hands are probably on other appliances, so it would make sense uh, yeah. to have something on, on your foot. And we're even looking at, ver I mean, this is even worse than square video, which is vertical video <laughs> as well. Like, so we probably will add that in the in the near future. Cool. And you know, one last thing, I, I think it's one of the neater things that I see coming out of ClearCaster that I just don't know if I see a lot of other places. And it's a little geeky, but like the logging that we do in the MQT data, it's it's pretty crazy what we're able to see and help diagnose in there. I mean, yeah. So I we, I mean, yeah. whenever there's somebody who's like, oh, we're we're having an issue with something, I say, cool, just go hit send your logs and call them up. You guys have 24/7 support, and you're like, "Oh, Facebook's broken." Which usually it's us, <laughs> not you. But uh, yeah, but you can figure that out because you guys are logging everything. Yeah, and also we're sending telemetry data, like about the network performance and the performance oh, yeah, of the which encoder, we're receiving too. back to Facebook and as well as back to Wowza. And so that rich set of data will enable us to do. Um, you know, help you during your events. Like, so yep. if you want event support, we'll be able to look and see what does the bandwidth look like, what does the frame rate look like, are there any errors in the encoding? It's like that kind of level of detail that we want to make sure where we can monitor your event and through the entire thing. Yeah. From, the, from yeah. the Facebook side, having that data is really important because traditionally, whenever an event doesn't go quite perfectly, the people on the platform side just blame the encoder. <laughs> but now we actually have all the data that we need to, to know it. that it was our fault <laughs> and that we can act that we should fix it. Yeah, I mean it, it's. Well, it's really cool. It's like making the entire workflow, especially encoding appliance, which is sometimes viewed as kind of like a dumb box that does powerful stuff, it's like intelligent, and kind of linking it all together. Um, and it helps that we've been doing this. I mean, I know with Wowza, we've been doing this for 10 years, right? So to now to have the full chain, like we've built a streaming engine, we have a player, we've now built an encoder. Like, we, you know, we think we know fairly well, like what needs to happen in each one of those stages to create a very reliable and robust stream. And now we're doing that, which is, it's exciting. Awesome. Well, thanks, Colleen. Thanks, Charlie, for joining. Um, that was Facebook Live, Facebook Live API coming at you from NAB Live.